how to extract a third grader. So now I am a principal of a school and I get an intercom call and it says, let's call him, let's call him Thomas today. Thomas will not leave the room. I need you to come escort him to the office, right? So I get this intercom call and I'm in my office and so I'm walking down the hallway to check out the situation and I walk in the third grade classroom and all the kids are sitting down and they're all doing work except Thomas is running around the room. He's just spouting multiplication facts to no one in particular, right? But he sees me and he runs and he makes a beeline for his desk and sits there like maybe I didn't see him, right? I was here the whole time. I don't know why you're here. So I walk over to Thomas and I know what I'm not going to say. <laughs> what I said was, Thomas, I, I understand that you're disrupting the class. I need you to go to the office with me. And he looked at me and he said, I'm staying right here. I don't know why kids keep saying that to me. <laughs> But I, again, I said, no, Thomas, I'm going to need you to come down to the office with me right now. And he said, make me, which I'd heard before. <laughs> but I am a master student now. Right? <laughs> so he says, make me. So I said, well, no, Thomas, I'm going to need you to go to the office with me right now. But what I'm confused about is this. When we go down to the office, do you want to carry that math book? Or do you want me to carry it for you? And he just stares at me. And, then, and the next thing I need to know is, now are you going to bring your own pencil with you down to my office? Or did you want to use a pencil that I can give you down there? I've got plenty. And then his, he kind of backs his look up like, what is happening? And the third thing I need to know is, Thomas, when we get down to my office, do you want to sit on the brown bench that is right outside my door? Or do you want to sit in the blue chair that's right inside my door? And he slammed his head into the desk really hard. And I heard him mumble, you just don't give up, do ya? <laughs> and two minutes later, he was down in the office doing his work. So what did I, what choice did I not give him? Yeah, going to the office or even how he was getting there. I'm not messing with that anymore. That was not a choice. He was coming to my office. But I gave him these other choices through that. And, and as Sam talked about with choices in the beginning, I was taking away the idea of the consequence, the consequence being going down to my office. I was taking that away from his brain and I was replacing it with like a mini crisis like giving him all of these choices now that he's going to have to think about. It wasn't compliance or non-compliance. It was, I can't help but evaluate how I will comply. It's like you're manipulating the little brain. Right, it's like you're I... manipulating them. That's exactly what it, what it was. Yeah, so then he, what he did was he carried his own math book. He carried his own pencil, but he sat in the blue chair in my office. So he made those choices. I didn't have to ask him. I just watched him make them. <laughs> 